Welcome back, Shaloners. All right, you guys have been howling for this video for like weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months and months and months. Today, we are breaking down the couples on Love is Blind because, holy shit, there's a lot to say. I'm gonna go couple by couple, talking about the dynamics of each one, the red flags, and more importantly, what we can learn, and answer the biggest question of all, is love really blind? Uh, spoiler alert, no. No, it is fucking not. No, no. But before we get into it, just want to remind you, if you have a love question of your own, find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and click get help. Also follow me on Instagram, at shallonxo. And in this time of quarantine, it can be hard to see our friends, it can be hard to wish someone a happy birthday or happy anniversary or something. So if you want to give a video shout out to someone you love from little old me, find me on Cameo at shallonxo as well. So love as blind. Okay, so the premise obviously is these people go in the pods, and they try to make connections with people. Connection. On these dating shows, like, do a drinking game where you have the right connection. I mean, do we have a connection? And they don't get to see the person's face until after they've already proposed. And to the surprise of no one, that sometimes goes poorly. What I was actually surprised about is that this shit went well. Like, and... What's interesting is like it only really followed a few different couples and there were other people who engaged in this experiment who uh, like clearly didn't make any sort of connection because we never heard from them again. Like the guy who was like, I'm 5'4 and girls aren't going to like me. It's like, well, it sucks. <laughs> but, you know, it's I thought it had more success than it deserved to have. And when I was thinking about this, as I'm sure you guys did, it's like, you know, yeah, like maybe this would be an amazing way to get to know someone until you think of one word, just one little word, Tinder. Ah, not the word you thought, Tinder. Because I know you, as I, have made a connection with a guy over text on the Tinder app or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh, we have the same, we have this banter, he's so funny, his pictures are great, like, and we had the pictures to see. We had that data point, minor, you know, half logged though it might have been, and then we show up on the date and instantaneously, nope, hard pass. I've had, I mean, in my experience, and every single one of my friends have shown up with a date with a guy and they're like, oh, you're actually gay. Okay, well, great. Or dudes, it's like, oh, those weren't your teeth. Okay, oh, that was a whole half a head of hair ago and 40 pounds, great. That's, that's just great. Or sometimes they're, they look exactly like their picture and they're perfectly attractive, but you just don't have that spark, right? So when I heard about this experiment, like the show, I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever, why are they doing this? Because everyone who's online dated already knows the answer to this question. And I realized watching it that I kind of function the opposite way. I have to meet someone. I have to get that animal magnetism, that chemistry. Like I see you from across the bar and it's like, I want it. Even if they're not on paper the hottest guy in the bar, even if they're not the tallest, they're not the rich, whatever. They're, that's why it's chemistry, because chemistry is undefined. We can't know anything about it. I'm saying this as someone who got a D in it, okay? Maybe some of you are actual chemists, whatever. Chemistry really isn't a thing. It's like witchcraft. It's witchcraft, right? It's just spell work. Then I should be good at it because I am a witch, but clearly I missed this day in witch school. So, that to me is like, yeah, that chemistry is simply, it's, it's just intangible and you can't create it. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. So I realized the way I work is I have to get that chemistry and then I decide to like someone's personality. This is not the way you should do things. <laughs> like This is not the way you should do things. And I think so many of us do. Like We get entangled with like these fuck boys or hot guys or the popular guys, the hurt lockers, the guys who we kind of want to be. We don't necessarily want to date. And I have always said that in my dating history, I was like a dog chasing a car. What would I do if I actually caught it? All these guys that I was like, oh, like me. Did I like them like really if i had to truly boil down in a scientific way their personality traits that i truly loved i don't know what i i, I would have had nothing nothing it's like i was caught up in the chemistry i was caught up in the possibilities of someone right it's not the person it's the possibilities and what i realized watching the show is that these people are doing the same thing just reversed. 
right? And it goes to show that desperation is desperation. It exists across any sort of time and space. It is the strongest smell in the universe that the opposite sex can detect. And it doesn't matter how you try to like game the system, it shines through. Because you first have to realize only a certain kind of person would go on this show. As a person who has done reality TV, a certain kind of person, and someone who is young enough and desperate enough to propose to someone they've never met. Like Mark, and we will go hard in on Mark and Jessica, don't worry. But like 24 and you're like, I'm ready to get married. I'm like, bro, why? And one of Jessica's big alleged reasons she was apprehensive about it. By the way, all of her reasons were complete bullshit. All of, that's, that's a spoiler alert. Her reasons were 100% fucking bullshit, but we'll break it down. But she kept saying, she's like, you really want to get married at 24? Like, I didn't. I wanted to go out and live my life, and I loved my 20s. And she made a good point. It's like, what kind of person is ostensibly fresh out of college? I mean, what, two, one, two years? I don't know they went to college, but you know what I mean. And they're like, I'm, I have experienced all life needs to teach me. I'm ready to settle down and just have this same one vagina for the rest of my life. It's it's peculiar, right? And it's peculiar that other people had the same sense of like, I just, I don't, it's like that Backstreet Boys. I don't care who you are as long as you love me. You know, I want that connection and chemistry. I am willing to put on the back burner in order to forge a connection. Like the short dude who we, I don't even know if he had a name. He just evaporated into thin air. He could be in this room. He's so short. We don't know. But like, he just wanted someone to love him and he was willing to suspend the knowledge, not the idea, the knowledge that we all have that chemistry is crucial. Because there's one term you gotta keep in mind for this whole video, the ick. I don't know if I invented the term, the ick. Like I did in my mind, but maybe not, I, I have no idea. Maybe it was on Sex and City, I don't know. But the ick is a cancer on your relationship. The ick is that overwhelming cellular level feeling of blech, blech, don't touch me with those fingers where you are just disgusted by someone. And it's important to note that the ick is not an ugly person's disease. Not at all. I've gotten the ick for very handsome guys. One was literally a model and I was like, get away from me. And the ick happens when you are with someone who has no spine, right? They're just whatever you want. Or you're trying to force a situation because it's good on paper. And the chemistry, though, is not there, right? And also, the other important thing to learn about the ick is that it cannot be undone. It cannot be undone. We can put a man on the moon. We cannot put the ick back in its bottle. Once it's out, honey, you're done. And I think there's one couple in particular you're thinking of Mark and Jessica. So let's dive into them. Oh, you guys want to know about my hoodie? I've had this hoodie since 2008. You guys remember Pete Wentz's clothing line, Clandestine? This is a this is a clandestine one. It says, give love, then take it away. And on the inside, there's a heart that says, always. I don't even know if they sold this. They like made just a few for the fashion show and I got one. It's great. So let's go in on Mark and Jessica. Because holy shit. We gotta talk about that baby voice, right? It's funny that she was the oldest chick on there and she is talking like a baby. And what stood out to me, like it was so grating for us females to hear. It's like, oh, what are you like Paris Hilton in 2002? Like enough. But dudes loved it. Remember what Barnett said? Oh, I like Jessica. Like I like her voice. And I was like, you really, you do? Dudes like baby voices. Not like you, you, but they, the higher the voice, the more it's associated with youth, right? Because when we think about it, you get on the phone with someone, you can tell sort of how old they are. You can tell an old person when you hear it, right? That's because as you age, your vocal cords stretch out and that's what causes you to sound old. And ostensibly, they're going to be able to like tighten vocal cords one day. So you're probably gonna have these like 65 year old Real Housewives of Dallas being like, I told you. Like <laughs> It's like 13 year old girl going, no. But Barnett really liked her voice. It came across as girlish, which is associated with youth, maid ability, childbearing hips. You know, this, this strikes to our caveman brain. And that tells me that 
No matter how much this show wanted to pretend that love is blind and that chemistry and physical attraction doesn't matter, clearly it did. It matters so much that when he didn't have any data points to pull from, her height, her weight, cup size, hip, waist to hip ratio, all that shit, he was still focusing on the one metric he had in terms of forecasting her appearance, which was her voice. So that tells me, like, you cannot override nature. You cannot override nature. Our caveman selves, our most basal, primal animal selves, need chemistry to mate. Maybe monkeys don't, maybe spiders don't, human beings do, right? And so this show, trying to deny that and oppress it, is trying to oppress human behavior overall, you know? And so that's why I keep saying, like, I'm shocked it worked as well as it did. I'm shocked anyone found love. So you know what? Let's put Mark, let's start with the good people. Let's put Mark and Jessica on hold for a minute. Let's just put them on hold. Okay, no, fine. We'll go back. We'll, we'll focus on Mark and Jessica because I know that's what you came for. So her baby voice, right? <clears throat> and here's why I also feel like this show is about desperation and projection is because she was still so fixated on Barnett. Now, he seems fine. He's so fratty. You know, he seems like we have all fucked Barnett. Like, maybe he has taken on a different form and a different name. We have all slept with Barnett. We have all dated him. We have all gotten the driest of dry texts from him. He seems like he would, like, just write back, LOL, yup. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, how am I going to put my mouth on some part of your body? You are so boring. But you do. Because, like, oh, he's hot. He's tall. He looks like he's got a big dick. Like, whatever. And Mark, on the other hand, seemed much more emotionally intelligent. He seemed fun and spunky. He just seems sweet. But here's what Mark, here's what his critical mistake that led to the ick, the spinelessness. Barnett seems less like the kind of guy you can cross. Although, you know what? I don't, I take that back because clearly Amber, we'll, we'll get there. So Mark and Jessica seem to have the connection and it was very obvious she had the ick. And this is another way we get the ick, when we aren't with the person we wanna be, when we're trying to force it but our heart is not there. And this is a testament to why after a breakup, we need to let the dust settle. And true, Barnett and Jessica like didn't, they weren't together, but in the context of this, they were. And she got dumped in the context of this, right? She got jilted for another woman and her heart was raw. It's like. Your heart doesn't see those technicalities. Like, well, I've never seen him. We're in a pod. Blah. The, it feels what it feels. And if you try to deny how it feels, and if you try to just be like, it's fine, I'm just going to switch gears. <sighs> what do we say? The psyche must be heard. She is going to stop you in your tracks until you start to listen, right? And how she did that with Jessica is gave her this poisonous dose of the ick for poor innocent Mark, you know, who didn't do anything to deserve it aside from being a little bit too amenable, but like he loved her, you know, and it makes you think, holy shit, when have people had the ick for me? Guys don't get the ick as much because they'll bone anything. They'll get the irk. Guys will get the irk where it's like, oh, she just makes me so annoying. They'll still fuck, but they get like irked out by you. We get the irk too, but we can overcome the irk. We can't overcome the ick. So, so then what happened with I took a bunch of notes. So this is what, this is when things shifted for me with Jessica because I felt, I felt for her because I could tell she wanted to feel that way for Mark and it just wasn't happening. And that's what happens with the ick. You're like, what's wrong with me? And when we don't recognize that the ick is here and that the ick is truly fatal, we're like, I'm going to force it. I'm just, and then you start to beat yourself up. It's like, am I just... Am I incapable of love? I'm incapable of love. I'm a monster. Okay. So since I'm a monster and I'm incapable of love, I'm just going to stick this out to prove to myself otherwise because I don't want to believe that I am, right? And then that didn't work. So the psyche was like, I am still waiting. So then she started engaging in behavior that I thought was cruel. She way downgraded how she looked. Like, what was it? Like, um some cute picnic or something and she showed up in like a gray t-shirt like she could not have possibly tried less like first of all she always had wine mouth she looked like a fucking vampire that just finished feeding like stop giving that girl red wine if you are ever on tv do not drink red wine don't do it stick to champagne the bubbles take 
girl. Then she started to pick fights with him, which this is the shift the ick makes. This is the shift. You get mean because you are suffering under such cognitive dissonance. And that means psychic stress. Like your mind is looking at the circumstances, the reality, and also evaluating how you feel. And those two things don't go. And so you're just in this loop of, I can't change this. I can't, I can't change the circumstance. I can't change my mind on and on and on and on. And it makes you like combat ineffective. Like you are just in hell and you verbalize that as viciousness towards this person. Get away from me. Don't, uh. what did you say? Like she was picking constant fights. He would say the most reasonable thing in the world. And she's like, did you just say that you don't want salt? On your stick like she would just lose her fucking mind and this poor guy didn't understand so he was shucking and jiving and trying to get things back on track because he obviously was under cognitive dissonance he didn't want to look at the reality i'm engaged to a woman who does not want to sleep with me because what was happening in his mind but i love her so they were both in these cognitive dissonance loops that were never going anywhere because it's like this standoff like no one was willing to own up to the truth about what the situation was and when we find ourselves in this ick loop, we have to get out. You cannot make yourself be attracted to somebody. You can't. Not with the right amount of alcohol, not with the right romantic setting, not if you just kind of get, you know, look at him a little bit and he looks like Jason Momoa from a pe It doesn't work like that. Either you're attracted to someone or you're not. And if you're not, you got to get gone, baby girl, before you destroy him. And that is what happened to Mark. Like she was being so vicious to him and like, you're young and you don't know what you're doing. Ugh. Like own the fuck up to how you feel. She's 34, she's not 23. And oh my God, maybe she's never felt the ick before. I believe Jessica has some attachment disorders. I think it was really, really telling at their wedding. She was completely by herself. Like I know they all threw these things together within a week. So you can't have like 500 people there, but she had no friends. I mean, I think her friends that she had, I think those were out of central casting. It's like she had like no interaction with them whatsoever. No one to walk her down the aisle. We didn't meet her family. She talked almost like very little about her family, if, if at all. And that I think is very telling, you know, like she might not know how to have a good relationship with anyone. She might not know how to express herself, how to tap into her emotions. Like we've said before, I read a study that said, you know, a theory, not a, well, study a theory, that only 5% of people are capable of insight. S Sweetheart sounds like she's in a 95 percentile, you know? I would say maybe Mark's a little bit more insightful, higher emotional IQ, maybe not. But on the reunion, she's like, I was reevaluating some things. I realized I drink too much. It's like, it's not about the drinking. The drinking is a symptom of something larger that's going on. In that case, more than likely the ick. I've never drank so much in my life as when I was dating someone who icked me out, right? Because you're just like, I think I just need to get really drunk. No, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. It's just going to make you fat and give you calories. It's not great. So then she did all these other weird things. Oh, oh, and her wedding, she wore black nail polish. I'm sorry. I think that's a red flag. I think that's a red flag. I wear black nail polish when I'm not happy. Like that's, that's like, I'm a chameleon changing into what I see. Like that's, mm -mm. nope. Yeah. No bouquet, no veil. That's right. She just like held up her dress and walked down. She didn't have a veil or a bouquet. It's like, she wasn't really taking this as, you know, serious. I, she didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be there. Also, this is what, this is what pissed me off. She was saying gross things to try to creep him out. Remember when she was talking about I was howling on my couch. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I was so angry. She's like, would you be in the room while well, it was Mount Vesuvius? Oh, I can't even say it. I can't even say it. It's so unladylike. It's so ridiculous. And... She was doing that to try to give him the ick, right? And this is, again, how the ick will shift. It's you try to talk that dude out of what he wants so that you don't feel guilty for breaking it off. Because we don't feel guilty about leaving a relationship if, we're, if everyone's on the same page, right? We feel guilty about walking out on a dude who's good on paper, who loves you. There's really nothing wrong. 
but not wanting to have sex with someone is what's wrong. And when I was in an ick relationship, I went back to my philosophy of the 80-20 rule. A partner's only gonna give you 80% of what you need, right? And that other 20% is always gonna kind of be missing. That's all right, that's just kind of what we have to accept. And I was like, all right, that's what's missing, 20%, the sex. Sex is not 20%, it's like 50 or 60. It is the glue that holds people together. It is, otherwise, you're friends. There's names for people who you enjoy and don't have sex with, friends, right? And the only difference is, you're allowed to have many friends. You're not allowed to have many husbands or boyfriends. You're, you don't feel guilty and like you're cheating when you're not having drinks with Becca, you're out with Katie instead. You're meant to have a wide cross section. Sex and chemistry is what blunts the edges of another person's personality so that we don't murder them because of how they put the peanut butter back on the shelf, right? It's like, I'm attracted to you. It's just giving, it's like a filter for your emotions. You're like, I'm just face tuning how I feel about you. And now I can talk right? But if you don't have that, you feel like there's a stranger in your house. It's like, who are you? You're not my friend because I'm tied to you. I'm not allowed to go have anyone else, right? It's a very stifling feeling. So her doing that pissed me off. So that wraps up Mark and Jessica. And I feel bad for him. He's a good dude who got, and she's seems like a not mean person. Mm, mm. but oh yeah this fuck shit with barnett we got okay i'm sorry we got to talk about that what oh the desperation this is why this is why i say don't tell a guy that you like him if you have to declare your feelings to a guy do you know why you have to do that because he doesn't feel that way that's not a fun thing to hear but let me tell you I would rather you hear it and not enjoy it than experience it and not enjoy it. Because I've been down this road and every time I've been like, I just need to tell him how I feel and I just need to get him alone. I just need to explain. That's because he wasn't doing anything to reassure me about that connection or that relationship. Why? He didn't want to. It's very simple. If Barnett had wanted to be with Jessica, he would have been. We'll break those two garbage fires down in a minute. But her she cornered him what three or four times every time she saw him she's like i just want to talk to you and you know i just don't want there to be like tension you know i just girl first of all you need some vitamin c serum you need some pico lasers you need some bow the tox you need to wind some shit back because you do not look 34 like you you get out of the sun get out of the sun it is not your friend okay this ain't it <clears throat> and she would corner Barnett and like pour her feelings out and his reactions were it's like I I just want like a constellation of gifts of Barnett reactions because they were incredible and then and then on what was it the reunion when it was the last episode of the reunion it, at some point when Barnett was like yeah you know obviously I know that you like me and Amber knows that too and she's like what oh my no how wait what would make you think that oh my god no who in the hell are you trying to fool girl we got it all on tape like she is <laughs> when you sit down and tell the guy how you feel and then he's like okay so i know you like me you don't get to be like oh presumptuous when you chase a guy and he calls you out on that you also don't get to have that reaction and this is why we don't chase men know how to chase barnett knew how to chase he just wasn't chasing Jessica. And that was the writing on her wall. And she was like, I don't see it, to her own destruction, right? And again, she should not have said yes to Mark if she was still wounded over Barnett. And this is something that I would think at 34 years old, you would have gotten the fucking memo on, but I guess not. Shouldn't watch this channel. That like, you cannot switch gears like that. You know, it's, you can't just like join another team when you get cut by the one you're on, it's just the heart doesn't work in those kind of, you know, time frames. Unfortunately, don't you wish they could? It's like, I'm over it. Okay. Oh, great guy comes along. Great. I love him. Nope. Doesn't happen. So let's talk about Amber and Barnett. I have some criticisms. Oh, well, I have, I have nothing but criticisms. She is crazy as a sack of weasels. I knew she was a lunatic from the jump because 
she does the classic fuckboy move of information dump. Blech. When she was in that pod, I mean, she was talking about her abortion. Why? Why would you talk about that to someone you've never met? I just trust you and I know you. No, girl, you don't. You're oversharing because you're crazy, right? And again, this is another person who doesn't know how to form healthy attachments. It's like, it's this all or nothing kind of thing, right? Love bombing. I think there's shades of that going on where she's like just throwing everything out there and the way she would do it. It's like, oh yeah, like something, something. They used to say that in cheerleading also in the army. Oh, I run with the boys. I run with the boys. There is nothing I hate more than a girl who's like, I'm the cool girl. I'm not like, I'm not that girly girl. I'm not that high maintenance girl. Bitch, I am. I am. You see these hoops? They mean I fight other females, okay? I like my nails done. I like my lashes. I don't camp. I like room service. I like champagne, not water you have to distill out of like a, some tank in the desert. No. And if that scares away a guy, good, run, bitch. I am high maintenance. This is how I am. And this is one of the few wonderful things about growing into an adult is you just get to be who you are. You get to be who you are. I don't have to pretend like I like Dave Matthews band and, you know, sleeping on the beach. I don't. That's not my vibe. And that's great if it's someone else's. That's awesome. But I am who I am. And Amber is truly not a friend to females. And you could, that was just this little red flag that perked up because I'm like, oh, I know girls like you. Oh, you want a martini? I'm fine drinking beer and farting. And you're like, Ugh, you're weird, okay? And But fine. It's like that Miranda Lambert song, Only Prettier. It's exactly like that, you know? Oh. So she was doing that to set herself apart because girls try to do that cool girl thing, like I'm just so low maintenance because it's not intimidating to men or it appeals to beta males who want a low maintenance woman because they're easier to impress and therefore they're easier to get. I'm not easy to impress and I'm not easy to get. I'm not on the clearance rack. I'm on the top shelf at Gucci. You got a problem with it? You can leave the store. We're not repricing everything. So Amber doesn't feel that way, partly because she's got low self-esteem. Now look, I'm not saying that like every girl who truly enjoys beer and camping has low self-esteem. No, not at all. If that's your vibe, that's your vibe. That's great for you. But, oh my God, someone's got it too. It's not going to be me. But the fact that she led with it in the way that she did, that's why I'm like, uh. And had that just only been something she said like it had she not said that in concert of these other things like oh army cheerleader abortion like just blah, 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 hemorrhaging all this information it would be just like oh that's her personality okay i believe kelly is like that like crunchy girl and that's super cute but she was saying it to try to throw everything at the wall she could and to get her hooks in him and it worked because she looked low maintenance vulnerable right um easy to get along with and more than anything accepting one thing barnett said about her that stood out in my mind was she just likes me no matter what i do she likes me so she loves me she thinks i'm awesome it's a psychological truth that we like people who like us right it feeds our ego it validates every wonderful thing we want to think about ourselves and it's easy. Well, this isn't going to be an uphill battle. I don't need to court someone. They're already all in. Now, clearly, this can flip to the other side because I know what you're thinking. Like, mm, I've super liked a guy and he was disgusted by me. Yeah, I, I know. I know. But like, I, it, sometimes it do be like that. But I think Barnett needed, like he needed someone to like him because he is lazy. Right? I don't think he is the courtship guy. He's the Bodega Flowers guy. He's the Russell Stover's Valentine's Day chocolate guy. Right? He's not the guy who's going to plan a big thing. It's like, oh, mm, you're here. You know what I'm getting you for birthday? Sex. He's Roy from The Office. You know? And he's hot now, but I think he's, he's like a peak 27. And wait, was he a virgin? Was he kidding about that? That was so weird to me. He could not. He couldn't be a, vir a virgin. I feel like, I don't know. That's so bizarre. I, I don't know. It's not bizarre to be a virgin, but it's bizarre to joke about being a virgin. You know, that's 
I, I find that very strange. But one thing I did notice is that he, when she would kiss him and she was always kissing him, this like, this man, this manic thing, he would literally recoil. 98% of communication is nonverbal. Body language, don't lie. And that boy, whether or not he's willing to admit it to himself, is creeped the fuck out by Amber. Okay? So why would he stay with her? To spite his family. I think her meeting the family made him dig his heels in even further. Because what we have here is a Meghan Markle Prince Harry situation. I don't believe Barnett has felt comfortable in his family based on his relationship with amber that's kind of what i'm extrapolating maybe it's completely wrong but he liked the fact that his family didn't like her that was like oh sticking it to him it was rebellion maybe he didn't go into the job that they wanted him to maybe he went into the exact job that they wanted him to and now he's like you know what i'm gonna show you i'm gonna insert my individuality and my independence and i'm gonna marry this mess on wheels this big titty lunatic okay her implants are great i i gotta give credit where credit's due they're great and oh my brother doesn't like it my know-it-all brother who's gonna lecture me about what marriage is confirmation bias right we talked about this in the kim kanye video where people will dig their heels in in the face of empirical evidence and oh yeah Amber had some very bad data points. Broke, homeless, student loan debt she hadn't just is completely ignoring. I didn't even know that was possible. That's crazy. A credit card just for makeup? What? So it's obvious she wanted Barnett to save her. And she said this. She's like, you know, it was difficult like coming right out of this experiment and being financially into financially dependent on him this bitch was going to get engaged to someone right it she just happened to luck out and get the hot dude i mean relatively speaking he's like camp hot you know he's hot for that crew but like you put him in the real world like bro you're a you're a hard 6.5 so she was going to glom onto somebody and we just talked about psychopaths didn't we we just talked about ellen degeneres and when I'm looking at Amber, and I'm looking at Ellen, and I'm looking at the hair psychopathy checklist, hmm, seeing some overlap. Self-aggrandizement. One of the first things Amber said was, oh, well, I ain't ugly. We are trashy, so I think that kind of, to me, that's the same. Self-aggrandizement. Um, lack of responsibility for herself. Didn't have any sort of explanation for why she's not paying her student loan debt you were in the army <sighs> i was only in rotc for two years two and a half years but it straightened me out like a piece of wire okay i have never forgotten the lessons i've learned i've never forgotten the discipline it set my life on the right track i've also never forgotten the financial literacy classes they made us take Amber, you were in the actual army for like eight years and you come out of there and you're just like, I don't know. You have skills, you're a tank mechanic. You could probably fix a lot of things. Like you're probably, you've got that crazy technical fix mind. I, I clearly don't have it. Why, why are you spending $700 on makeup and you don't have a place to live? And why did you drop ask? It's just, there's there was no reason. It was just, I don't know, this is uh, I could, I could work as much as I want. And also, what's really pinging for me is parasitic lifestyle. Just like Ellen needs to glam onto A-list celebrities and will literally not speak to us norms, Amber gloms onto people. She was couch surfing. She's a user, right? She's a grifter and she's a user. And she has probably thrown those tits all around Louisiana to get by, to get her bills paid. She's probably had some sugar daddy. She's probably had some old dudes. She's probably done some you know, untoward things to get by because she doesn't believe she should have to work like the rest of us. She doesn't believe that it's like, oh, that's for you guys. It's an us versus them thing, just like Ellen. I'm not saying she's a full on psychopath, but I don't know. Also, when she was like talking about her abortion, she was fake crying. There were no tears coming out of her eyes. No tears coming out of her eyes. She was... 
Uh, and then it was just really hard for me. It was really hard for me. You're a fake crier. You know who else is a fake crier? Carol Baskin from Tiger King. My husband. <laughs> when you cry, there's tears. Okay? Call me crazy. So I think there's something very sinister going on with Amber. I think she's, I think she's, you know what? Maybe it's not even sinister. She's just such a user that she doesn't know how else to interact with the world unless it's take, take, take. Maybe because she was raised poor and that was how she was taught. It's like you take whatever you can get from those people. I, that's how a lot of people are raised. And it's really unfortunate. But she is a twisted bitch. And I think Barnett, like not like he's just lighting the world on fire, but he did seem to sort of have his life together. You know, he had a house. It was not cute. Well, it was cute. It was just messy. But yeah, that dog, that dog was great. So they seem to be sticking it out. And again, this is a Harry Meghan situation where it's like the more, it's us against the world, babe. And you know, that's what she's gassing him up and telling him. Ah, I'm sorry, I usually don't do videos this long. I'm like running out of steam. So we're going to talk about breeze through the other couples, right? Because let's be honest, those ones were the big ones. Cameron and Lauren. Cameron and Lauren. When Lauren first came on the screen and it said she was a content creator, which, okay, as a New Yorker, the first question we ask people is, what do you do? And I've been told by non-New Yorkers, like when I was like away in the Caribbean with my ex-boyfriend, like we would meet people I'm like, oh, hey, look, like, what do you do? You're from Omaha. And he's like, don't say that because it comes across like you're asking how much money they make. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not. Why would I care? But it's because New Yorkers, we are so defined by our jobs because you can't just be like, I don't know, like I may start like a line of sarongs or something. Like it, that city will chew you up and spit you the fuck out. It's too expensive. It's too hard to live there if you aren't hustling. So when I see these shows, the, f the only thing I want to know is what do these people all do for a living? So when it's like computers, sales, I'm like, what does that mean? And I, it's weird to me that they don't have these conversations like, that blew my mind that Barnett did not know that she didn't have a job and was in a shit ton of debt. Like, I would not have gotten out of that pod without knowing that. If you can't ask those hard questions when you're not face to face, you can't ask them at all. So when I saw that Lauren was a content creator, I was like, oh, Christ, she's a YouTuber. I know exactly how terrible they are. I was talking today to this boy that I'm talking to. If it was a month ago, I would have said maybe we were dating. But since I have not seen a human male in forever... We're talking <clears throat> and he's like how's work going i was like oh my god it's like going great actually you know everyone's just home watching stuff and he's like be humble and i'm like no i don't want to he's like humility is a gift and it's something that's good to cultivate in all aspects of our life i'm like no so i know how bad we are and i'm one of the more self-aware ones <laughs> so i was like oh she's a content creator and could she be cuter like could she be saner cuter, smarter, more articulate, love that girl. Like, ah, love. And could Cameron be more of a goober? He's such a fucking goober. The rapping, have you seen the rapping? I can't embed it here because it's copyrighted and I won't because you will want to fill your vagina up with cement and never use it again. It's ugh, agony, agony. Him rapping is like when people post clips of their uh, improv performance, you know, troop on Instagram. No, 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 no. He's such a fucking goober. And I feel like it's not a coincidence that he only dates black girls because they might not know how much of a goober he is. Do you know what I mean? They might think this is just how white guys are. Sweetheart, they're not. They don't have to be lame like this. They, they should not be. He's just such like a he's a herb and also he could not stop touching her and by the end i'm like he is going to wear her out like a bar of soap it made me insane it was so proprietary and over the top i kept my mom and i and my friend christine were like she's gonna get the ick it's gonna it's gonna happen five four three and it never did and they're so happy and i'm like really but godspeed you know good for them but he seems so touchy and like so possessive and that makes me think he's very very inexperienced and very insecure that he has to keep like a physical hold on a woman or she's gonna float away like a kite lauren maybe you should on paper like he's good looking scientist
He's like a brontosaurus, just like, uh, well, my name is Cameron, and I'm here to say I want to make you my wife today. That ain't it. Okay. Damien and Gianna. Her proposing to him. Don't do that. Here's a here's a question. <clears throat> when you pick up that EPT pregnancy stick and it's like, oh, I'm pregnant. Is he gonna be like, wait a minute. I'm pregnant. I'm gonna take this off your plate. Nope. He is still gonna let you carry that baby because that's how it works. So maybe ladies, maybe we don't propose to men. How about that? How about we let that just be a thing that they do for us? Gianna's Giannina, sorry, Giannina, we'll call it Gigi. So Gigi's whole thing to me felt like, if it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't. She's 25. I can't imagine that she's like, I really wanna get married. She still seems like the kind of girl who like passes out on her thong after like day drinking in Miami and she wears like a belly chain. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Like, I just feel like I haven't seen her nudes, but I, like, I have, I have, I have. We all sort of have. I like her though. Like she's funny and spunky and she stands up for herself. And I, I like her that she like bounces shit back to Damien. But I definitely got the sense that like, you know, oh great, if I meet my husband and get married, that's fine. She didn't have that desperation, which is why she pushed back against Damien. Cause she's like, well, fuck you. If this doesn't work out, fuck you. And that's why I liked her because that's the attitude we should have in a relationship. Now she herself said that she would try to self-sabotage things. But when she would call him out and stuff, I don't think she was out of line at all when in that um episode where it was barnett's birthday and they're like condo complex cool and damien said something rude to maybe lauren or some girl and Gigi called him out and then he doubled down and was like well, that's just my sense of humor and i like saying awkward things that makes people smile and she's like was she smiling no none of us are smiling it was rude i'm like yes call him out call him out on his fuck shit it turned into a huge fight but, you know, don't call him out in public. Damien came across as a big old alpha male, and I don't mean that in a good way. Why? Because I'm pretty sure he was a Trumper. Because he's like, are you ever going to change your politics? And she's like, nope. And I was like, yeah, Gigi, yeah. And I think it's pretty hard for those two types of ideologies to coexist in a relationship. But I, I do think they have a chance because they didn't get married. Now, ideally... He would have told her that yesterday and not the day of the wedding at the aisle. <sighs> I don't, dude, I don't know. If someone did that to me, you, mm -mm, there's no real coming back from that kind of humiliation that didn't have to go that way. I don't care what the producers are telling you. I don't care. You could have been like, we're not walking down the aisle. Like we're not, I'm not doing this to a person that I claim to love, but he did. And I think part of his way of dealing with her is minimizing. You know, you're on your phone too much. I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to marry you until we're at the altar. Like, it's his world and she's very much got to be in place. And I wonder if maybe he thought that was going to be her role. You know, she's like Latin. They're very like domestic. They're family people. Like, you know, they're good women, good mamas, you know. And maybe he thought, oh. I'm just going to I'm just going to change her. She might be wild now, but I'm going to get her home barefoot and pregnant and she's going to love it. Barking up the wrong tree on that one, Dame. But you know, she said that they called off the wedding and now in the reunion that they are on track and they're like dating and working things out. And so this is a good note that just because you decide you're not ready for a step doesn't mean you're not ready for any part of the relationship. And a lot of times people try to make it seem all or nothing, you know? And because people want clarity. If I had called off my wedding, um, I knew I would have had to break up with my fiance and I didn't want to break up with him. I just didn't know that I was ready to get married yet. And I made a different decision than Damien and Gianna did and Giannina and, you know, wasn't the best. So I want to know what you guys think about their dynamic. She's cute. She reminds me of Kate Upton She's so, and like Kate Hudson. Maybe all the Kates mixed together. He's, why were there so many redheads on the show? 
How about love is ginger? Can we call it that? Speaking of gingers, Kelly and that guy, the guy, did he have any? Kelly and Kenny. I posted a picture on my Instagram of a dog I saw that looked exactly like Kenny, and you know I was right. This is one of the few relationships that I think should have worked out, but didn't, and I blame pretty much Kelly 100%. I think Kelly, much like Jessica, has a difficulty forming attachments. I think it was hugely telling when they were in Mexico and she was like laying in bed with him and they still hadn't had sex. And he was like, it's chill, you know, like, let's take our time. And she's like, well, I'm just, I'm nervous because I don't think you can give me an orgasm because I have problems having an orgasm. I was like, I had to wind it back. I was like, she didn't just say that. She, she didn't just say that. Orgasms are nice. They're great. They're great. A plus. But ladies, we can give them to ourselves in five minutes, right? If someone invites you out to dinner, your friend, let's go get dinner. Let's go get a nice dinner. Yeah. You're not like, no, I just need to eat as fast as possible. I just, so I, I only eat a Burger King because I need to go to the fastest possible place to eat and just get full real quick. No, you go to dinner because you enjoy the experience. That's why I have sex with people, for the experience, not for the orgasm like cool you know great but if you love someone and you're attracted to them that it's such a bizarre thing to say it is such a bizarre thing to say on camera especially it's this is shades of jessica trying to talk mark out of liking her this is like her putting up roadblocks for why this isn't going to work out and and making excuses maybe she had the ick I think she seems very uncomfortable inside of her own body. And the fact that she had like gained 40 pounds, I was like, where? You're, she's already like fit and small. But it's, she just doesn't seem comfortable around boys. I would not be surprised if maybe she wasn't straight as an arrow. I really would not be surprised. I just kind of get the sense that she's just not comfortable around men. And Kenny seemed, he was so emotionally intelligent, so communicative, so wise and so calm and centered. Like probably if we were in the pods, I probably would have chosen Kenny. I, would pro I wouldn't have ended up having sex with him, but I would have chosen him. <laughs> and I really think Kelly could benefit from a lot of therapy because it just seems like there's something going on beneath the surface with her that is preventing her from making these connections you know, in like a healthy way and like maybe it's trust. Who knows? Who knows? But it seems like a bummer that they didn't work out. And he seems, you know, dorky, but that's great. Like sweet dude. I heard he's got a girlfriend. Ugh, Barnett and Amber. Ugh. Why is her mouth open? Oh, in everything, in everything. Oh God. Carlton and Diamond. And these will be the last ones. And they really didn't get off the ground. I mean, he proposed. I think he did a bait and switch. I think Carlton was on there for the wrong reasons. I do kind of. I think he was on there for clout. The fact that he's like, I usually only date supermodels. Like, shut the f We talked in my quarantine video about how I dated a guy who said that. And I was like, well, I've seen you naked. So, and I, I know where you take me to dinner. So you're not rich and you're not hung. So I, what are you basing that on? So the fact that Carlton would say that tells me he's really insecure, you know, like he's clearly trying to overcompensate for something. And turns out it's uh, allegedly his past of dating dudes. And the lesson there is it's all about how you tell your story to people, right? I think if he had come on the show and not led with it, but brought it out in a natural sort of way and just been like, yeah, I've dated, I've dated guys, you know, I've tried it in college, whatever. I prefer girls, but you know, it was an interesting experience and it made me more, more self-aware. Okay. He's comfortable with it. Other people are more likely to be comfortable with it. Right. But he didn't. It was like a secret, a secret, a secret. He was crying when he said it. And so he presented it as a paper to be graded. And Diamond got out her red pen. It was like, F, I don't, blame her for her reaction of I need some space with this this is not what I thought I was going to hear I this is not the experiences I thought you would have had and why didn't you tell me this a lot sooner you know like that I I totally get how she felt like blindsided by that but I think the way he approached it was like 
you know, he was like sunk from the beginning. You know, it was it was a dead end already because he had such it was such a raw nerve for him and he approached it in such an apologetic way. When we come to people like that and this like, oh, I've slept with a hundred people or oh, I used to hook up with guys or oh, I've declared bankruptcy. When we tell our origin story, it should be our greatest story, you know? Yeah, I declared bankruptcy, but you know what? Now I am the most financially literate person I know. I have a budget, I did this. So really it was the wake up call I needed and now I can go the rest of my life knowing what I'm doing, okay? That's a good origin story. Yeah, I dated guys. It made me self-aware. It gave me empathy. It plugged me into women's plights. I started to see things from a woman's point of view. Okay, great. That's great. We can't change what happened. We can change what it meant. And how he decided to mean it and what it decided to what he decided it would mean was nothing positive. You know, there was no growth, there was no awareness, there was no nothing. It was just, I'm sorry. And when we give people that vibe, we give them power. An apology is something that people can accept or reject, right? And an apology means the recipient is in the position of power. You, if you're apologizing, you're inherently doing something wrong. So that means Diamond was allowed to come down on him hard because that's the construct he had set up. I actually don't think she came down on him hard. I think her reaction is the reaction a lot of people would have had, whether that's politically correct or not. I think their fight was bananas. How quickly it devolved, <clears throat> it was really hard to watch. I'm about to have a coughing fit. <coughs> it's not Rhoda. It's not Miss Rhoda. It's allergies and I inhaled something. <coughs> so, ah. I wanna know what you guys think about this. Who was your favorite couple? <coughs> Which couple would you have liked to see succeed? And who are you like? They got to break up right now. Tell me everything before I aspirate my own saliva. Follow me on Instagram, ShallonXO. Click like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow for another new video.